should you scratch build his own mortalis table, or is there a better way? I guess it depends on how quickly you ever want to play a game. Here's a calendar invite for 2025. June okay? Welcome back to the State of Play. Today, it's scratch building. Or is it? I spend a good amount of time on YouTube scouring for solutions that appeal to me to make a modular zone mortalis table. And I came to the conclusion that it appears there are two types of terrain channel on YouTube. The first are channels like Geek Gaming Scenics, The Terrain Tutor, and Black Magic Craft, who create fantastic scratch built terrain pieces from what most of us would consider junk. And second are hobby channels that seem to take newly released terrain and teach you how to paint it really quickly in like 10 minutes or five minutes or two minutes with a primer, a dry brush, a wash and some pigments. Both of these options are amazing in what they achieve, but I was looking for something in between, something probably a bit too specific. I wanted to find a way to augment and extend existing plastic terrain with some scratch build stuff so they'd work seamlessly together. Now, my original plan was to scratch build an entire table and make it completely modular. A mammoth task that I eventually scrapped because someone bought me a box of Zone Motalis columns and walls and I loved them. But there's not enough in a box to fill a table, there's barely enough to fill a chair. I started to calculate the costs of a full table of plastic terrain and I nearly had a heart attack. You can see my thinking in my previous Zone Motalis costs video. This led me to look for other options. Options that would keep my costs down let me use plastic terrain that I already had and use it across different games. I'm not asking for much, just to have the cake, eat the cake, share the cake, and have it cost the same as a muffin. I'm pretty good with card and glue. I know my way around foam core and blue foam, and I'm not adverse to getting my hands dirty with plaster, resin, or modeling compound. I thought, this'll be a breeze. Surely zone mortalis can't be that hard. It's mainly just columns, walls, doors, platforms, stairs, ladders, railings, elevators, barricades, pipes, machinery, tanks, sump, gang strongholds, market stalls, barrels, containers, and paint. Easy. So I picked one of the more complicated things to try first. A door that can open, based on the Games Workshop one. The planning and measuring of angles was a bit time consuming, but wasn't what I call hard. Solving a Rubik's Cube without taking the stickers off is hard. This is just glue and a scalpel. It took about six hours and cost next to nothing to make. That's a good thing, right? Wrong. This one is the door from the Games Workshop Columns and Walls kit. It took seconds to cut from the sprue, minutes to glue together, and I'd painted up eight of these in less than two hours. Even if I'd managed to get the card door build time down to three hours using templates, to make eight would have taken 24 hours spread over multiple hobby days. Like a week. About a week. And that's just doors. I'd still have to make everything else. I want to play games now, not in 2025. Scratch building is much, much cheaper, but boy does it take a hundred times longer. So inevitably, I scrapped the full table scratch build because after weighing up the old time versus money debate, having doors and walls already made was just infinitely quicker. It's still costly though. There's got to be a middle ground where you can buy some and build some and have them work together. Instead, I opted for a mix and match approach. What if I could scratch build the bulk of the terrain quickly and make it work seamlessly with the Games Workshop Zone Mortalis stuff? So I get to use the doors and walls and columns from a few kits, but I don't have to take out a mortgage on a fully plastic underhive. This is what I decided to go with. Thanks to Eric's Hobby Workshop for the concrete walls idea, these are incredibly simple and amazingly effective, and much cheaper than buying 14 boxes of plastic columns and walls, which is how much terrain I managed to get out of this. I figured I could take Eric's idea one step further and make them integrate fully with the Games Workshop kits I already owned. All I needed was some precise measurements and a box of platforms. I didn't use blue foam like Eric did, mainly because I had some balsa foam already lying around from a previous project, and this stuff already has a texture that looks exactly like concrete, and it was the thickness I wanted, one inch. I just had to cut it into perfect size blocks, which of course is easier said than done. I'm not great with the scalpel through thicker material, or even with a saw. The cutting angle always ends up 
drifting and you don't really get perfect 90 degree cuts. And I, I don't have a full woodworking workshop in my house. I mean, who does? Well, carpenters. Carpenters, probably. So I made a rig. This is just a 15 centimeter skirting board cutting guide that I found in my garage when I moved in. No, I've never cut skirting board in my life and I don't really have any plans to try. Funnily enough, all the walls in my house already came with skirting boards. True story. I added some card in the slot and taped it in place to steady the razor saw because the slot was too wide and the saw wobbled. All I needed to do was raise the form so that my saw would cut all the way through. and you can get almost perfect cuts every time. Each short wall needs to be the exact width of any Games Workshop wall and the same height. Same with the columns and the long walls. If they end up being too long or too tall, you can just sand them down. And if they're too short, you can always just raise them with some paper or card. I then just glued it together and added pieces just like Eric did. The only difference was I used kids' crazy stores from Amazon to make smaller pipes. Once it's painted up, you've got a concrete wall with pipes. I'd always liked the idea that Zone Mortalis was originally concrete structures, and over time they decided to clad them in iron and steel, which then just rusted. So these would act as the walls before the steel was added. Now, to get these to link with the Games Workshop columns and walls, you just need to add platforms on top. First, you need to trim away the teeth from the vent platforms. Test it for accurate height, maybe sand it if you need to. Paint the platforms separately, it makes it much, much easier, and then glue them on. It's best to glue them on using some existing plastic columns and walls as guides to make sure you get the platforms in exactly the right place. It doesn't really matter if there's little gaps in between the concrete walls and plastic walls. Looking at a zone mortalis or underhive, it's not like these guys have a maintenance team. And that's it. You've now got a whole bunch of new sections that can fit seamlessly with the Games Workshop kits, for a fraction of the cost. Terrain isn't fast or cheap, no matter what you're making, but I have found that you can make it for much, much less by being clever about how you extend what you've already got. More time playing and less time diving through your recycle bin. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Well, you'll see me. I, I, I can't actually see you.